Hi guys, and welcome back to the Fungi Files. Today, we're going to be tackling one of the most common hurdles in mycology, contamination. No matter how experienced you are, it happens to all of us. I've got a couple examples to show you exactly what to look for and how to deal with it. But it's not all bad news. I have some success stories to share with you as well. So stick around and we'll compare some contaminated agar and grain to some healthy looking mycelium and piapino cultures. And let's start with the bad news. Right here, we have a grain jar that did not quite make it and has been infected with trichoderma. And this one is pretty severe and is spread throughout the entire grain jar. Trichoderma is one of the more common forms of contamination that you can get and can affect you through the entire process from your grain, your agar, and your substrate. Right here is going to be a jar of shiitake that I spawned out on the 18th of September. And you can see that this is going to have a different type of infection. It's not trichoderma, but it is a bacterial infection. You can see that it is very slimy. Notice the slimy texture and discoloration, as well as the mycelium obviously avoiding this spot in the jar. Bacteria will often show up in the jar with improper sterilization techniques or too much moisture in the jar. If you've ever opened a jar and it smelled sour or unpleasant, that's always a dead giveaway that there's some form of contamination. Trichoderma contamination happens from spores or mold spores that are in the air that enter into our procedure somewhere along the line. Most likely this happened during the inoculation, transferring agar to grain. It could also be other bacteria that was hidden in the grain or spores that had been moved over. Unfortunately, the only thing to do in these situations is to toss the jar. There is almost always no way to recover from contamination like this. Most importantly though is discarding it outside in the trash as you do not want to spread these spores, especially with trichoderma. When they've entered this green state, that means they've germinated and they are ready to spread as much as they can. It starts out not green and then slowly as it matures, it turns to this dark green color. It's super important that we bleach this and completely sterilize these jars after we empty them before we ever introduce new grain to them. To prevent this contamination, we need to make sure that we are using proper stale techniques and avoiding overhydrating your grains. And most importantly is to work in a clean environment, such as using the oven tech or a still air box or preferably a flow hood. Next, let's take a look at these agar plates. Both of these have clear signs of contamination. This first one has some bacterial growth, potentially a mold growing through. And with this one, while we do see some mycelium growth, you'll notice there is a film along the surface. Wet looking spots, such as on this Shimeji sample, indicate that bacterial contamination along with the lack of development of mycelium. Now with these, this likely happened due to improper sterilization, spores falling down onto the surface during the transfer, or dirty tools used during that transfer. All of these samples were when I was using an open face still air box. To avoid this, you'll always want to use 70% isopropyl alcohol to sterilize your tools in your workspaces, along with flame sterilizing your scalpels before use. 
and most importantly, a clean environment. I prefer using a still air box, however, using a HEPA filtered flow hood is the ideal. Time to go throw these out. Now, let's take a look at a success story. Here, we have some fully colonized lion's mane. This is very hard to tell because of how thin and wispy the mycelium is, but you'll start to see it clumps, which actually means I've let it go for too long, and we will be spawning this to bulk here very soon. Likewise, we have this Piapino colonizing beautifully, even with these discolored agar spots, everything in here is very healthy with no contamination. This is what you want to see in your jars. The secret here was proper grain hydration, correct sterilization procedures, and maintaining a clean working environment. Both of these jars were treated with the same care as mentioned earlier, and we got wonderful results. If you're struggling with contamination, don't be discouraged. It's a normal part of the process that we all have to deal with. But with practice, success rates will improve and we can mitigate our contamination results. Let's wrap up with a few tips to prevent contamination. First, like I said earlier, always use 70% isopropyl alcohol. We want to use that concentration as higher concentrations don't destroy the cell walls of the contaminants that we're trying to eliminate. Make sure that you are sterilizing your tools, your jars, and your workspace. With your jars, make sure you're letting them air dry after spraying them. And before introducing grain or substrate, your container should always be air dried as well. Secondarily, you have to be mindful of your grain preparation as too much moisture content is going to cause bacterial contamination within those grains. And finally, working in a sterile environment, if you don't have a flow hood, Try making a still air box or even using the oven tech method to have a pseudo flow hood. Contamination will happen, but with practice and improvements on your procedure, you can minimize it and you can keep your mushroom cultivation projects going strong. Thanks for tuning into the fungi files. If you've dealt with contamination in your grow before, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your experience, answer any questions that I can. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.